Oh, I do have a package. I don't think I ordered anything. Okay, this is crazy because uh, this is from Relativity. <laughs> this is from Relativity Media, which is uh, the movie company that I wrote the song for you with Keith Urban for. So I'm guessing that it's a it's a gold record because that that's, <laughs> that song went <laughs> gold. Okay, that's excellent timing to do an interview about songwriting, huh? Uh, come on in. Welcome. The day we went out on the ice, time stood still. You know, I first was influenced by music because my father was a songwriter, and both of my daughters are songwriters, so apparently it's some kind of a genetic thing that's going on. But I grew up in a, in a household where being a songwriter wasn't some crazy alien idea. Uh, as early as 11 years old, I can remember wanting to write songs and feeling like I had something that I needed to say. And at first it was always about the words. Um, I didn't have any music. I didn't know how to play an instrument. And I was a big John Denver fan, so I would write my own lyrics to his songs. And I still have some of the, the notepads that say, uh, to the tune of Sunshine on My Shoulders, but, but my lyric. So it was a... Uh, it was a language thing at first, and then I realized I needed to get music, so I picked up a little ukulele of my dad's and started playing, and before long I was able to actually have my own music and my own lyrics. Um, I moved to Nashville in 1979 to go to college, and I soon found out that there was a music business. I didn't come to college to become a musician or a songwriter. I thought I was going to be an attorney, but I discovered that there was a music business here, and so I really started pursuing it hard. And uh, I did some work in the jingle and advertising industry, which I think is really good for songwriters. And my first major cut came because some folks that, uh, that were already hit songwriters realized that I had some potential. And they, you know, held my hand and took me into Warner Chapel Publishing. And uh, the next thing I knew, I had a songwriting deal. I've been fortunate enough to have some songs that have really affected people. I've had people call me up, send me emails, write me letters and say the first time I heard this song I, I literally I pulled over to the side of the road and I, I just had to stop because you were telling my story. Um, one of those songs, Tonight I Want to Cry, really affected a lot of people because it's difficult sometimes to write about the dark moments and, and I co-wrote that song with Keith Urban who I've written a lot of my hits with and he was going through a relationship issue and I had just been through a big relationship uh, issue myself. And so I think that we were primed to write about not the guy who wins, <laughs> but the guy who is currently in the process of losing and how, how are you gonna process that, you know? And, and so it doesn't surprise me that the way that our, the guy in our song processed his problem was to sit down at a piano and work it out through music. My experience is that songs generally come in two different ways, completely separated. There's gift songs and then there's craft songs. Uh, I've had some gift songs and I've had a lot of craft songs. I mean, one of the gift songs was uh, Who Wouldn't Want to Be Me that I wrote with Keith Urban. He came in and played the little banjo riff and literally in 45 minutes we wrote that song. The craft songs are the ones that you have to really wrestle to put the puzzle together. And some of those songs for me have been songs that uh, have been assignment songs. The song that, that Keith and I were nominated for a Golden Globe Award for this year for best original song in a motion picture was from a movie um, called Act of Valor that starred actual Navy SEALs and I'm sure a lot of folks have seen that movie. We were commissioned to write the end song. We knew where it was gonna start, we knew what the movie was about, and so it wasn't one of these free-flowing things. We really had to puzzle together the song and it took a long time because we wanted to say something very specific about humanity and war and sacrifice and it, it took three days of conversation about what we wanted to write about before we ever even began writing the song so be happy when the ones show up just you know and you channel them those are the gift songs but you have to learn how to craft the songs. When it's not just flowing, the thing that I always see in beginning songwriters is that most of them are born with a certain amount of gift and they never bring their craft up to the level that their gift is. And that's one of the things that I would say, make sure that you're as good a craftsman as you are a naturally gifted songwriter.
All right, I'm gonna give you guys one of the one of the best tricks that I know to get unblocked when you're writing a song and trying to trying to get somewhere. Uh, I call it climbing the image ladder, and I try to visualize a picture because I'm almost always trying to show someone something as opposed to tell them, which is very important. Show me, don't tell me. Right? You can tell me that you know you love your mom, but if you give me a picture of her standing there at the kitchen sink and sacrificing for you, it becomes a much better emotional image and I remember it. So one of the things that I do when I feel like that I'm a little bit uh, empty or I'm not sure where to go is I'll pick a simple image and then try to climb the image ladder as much as possible. An example would be um, there's a book laying by the bedside. That's an image and everyone can immediately see it. There's a Bible laying by the bedside. Now it becomes a different story. There's a dusty old Bible laying by the bedside. Now it becomes even a different story. It's not just a book, it's a Bible. It's also one that hadn't been opened in a long time. There's a dusty old Bible laying by the bedside next to a half empty bottle of gin. Now that's another, and, and, as, and as I do it, just as an exercise to be as specific as possible with the imagery so that the image leads the person into knowing the story that I'm trying to tell, then I generally find that I start to get unblocked and, and even if it's not the image that I'm working on for that song, I've got my brain working in the right way to be as specific as possible in my imagery so that the story tells itself through pictures and I don't have to over explain it. You know, I meet so many songwriters who ask me for tips on how to get a foot into the industry, you know, and, and get started. And it's not a sexy tip, <laughs> but I think it's the real answer to that question. Uh, I think that the answer is proximity. I think you have to be near the industry that you want to be in. And it doesn't take a lot to figure out that that's the case for other industries. You know, if your dream job was to be a ski instructor, you would not live in Miami. If your dream job is to be a songwriter, move to Nashville, move to LA, move to New York, move to Atlanta, move to places where there's a group of songwriters making a living and try to join that industry. And the way I tell people to join it is just show up. Just start circling it every way you can, every gig, every anything that you can do to be close to it and for a while, you're going to feel like you're on the outside, just going around and around, and that's true. And then one day you will look up and realize that your concentric circles have gotten smaller and that you're now actually well within the boundaries that where you first started and that you've joined the industry. And so beyond specific tips on, hey, how to write a song, make your choruses better, that's, you know, that's all an individual path. If you want to be in the industry, move to where the industry is. Stay in close proximity to it and one day you'll look up and you'll find out that you're actually in that industry. When I came to Nashville and started writing songs, the most traditional model still really was prevalent. And that was you sit down in a room with a blank piece of paper and an unstrummed guitar and a few hours later, you know, you come out with a song. And the world has spun many, many, many times since then, the advent of digital recording and laptops. And also, uh, I started writing almost exclusively with artists out on the road, trying to help them make their time on the road more creative. So we, we have needed for many years now a way to quickly replicate what a record might eventually sound like. And the Tune Tracks products are the best suite of products that I've ever seen for quickly being able to get immediately really close to what a record might sound like as you're sketching and writing the song. Uh, Easy Drummer and Superior Drummer, everyone I know uses them and all the artists that I work with are very familiar with it. So it's a common platform that, and a common conversation that we have when we start to write. Also, in my genre of country music where I write most of it, it's become much more rhythmic over the last few years. So you don't tend to just sit down with an acoustic guitar and write good old boys like me. So we're basing a lot more stuff on loops and grooves. I never write a song with Keith Urban now that we don't start with a loop and a groove 
in Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer and then build from there. And the key thing is, is that the sounds and stuff are so good that a lot of it actually winds up making it to the record. You think I'm just making a little scratch pad thing here on my laptop and the next thing you know, you get in the studio, you can't beat the sounds and you can't beat the part. And so it actually becomes part of the record. The day we went out on the ice I felt complete and completely in the moment